Hi, my name is Sam, and I'm the Glass Bottom Boat Manager here at the Meadow Center. The center is still currently closed to the public, so I'm taking this time to share a little bit more about one of our favorite things to see on a glass bottom boat ride, turtles. We'll be going over the major types of turtles commonly found in Spring Lake, what they eat, what their role is in the ecosystem, how big they get, and where they can generally be found. There are lots of turtles that live on site, and of course we have a few here in our aquarium as well. So come along with me while we check it out. The clear, constant temperature water of Spring Lake makes it an ideal habitat for several different kinds of temperate North American freshwater aquatic turtle. Turtles are reptiles and are thus cold-blooded or ectothermic, so environmental temperature is a big factor in how active and healthy they are. So is the availability of sunlight. The Edwards Aquifer spring water that gushes from the ground at the San Marcos Springs is 72 degrees Fahrenheit helping to mediate extreme seasonal temperature variation in the turtle's habitat. And since the water is so clear, the turtles get plenty of sunlight. These factors help explain why there are so many turtles here. Researchers and students from Texas State University have identified over 5,000 individual turtles from this half-mile stretch of water since studies began in 1995. And countless more have been sighted but not closely examined. With so many turtles, it's easy to see how sunbathing locations like this one can get crowded on clear, calm days. There are six different species of turtle with breeding populations at Spring Lake. They're all aquatic, which means they spend most of their time in the water. But since they're egg-laying reptiles, mother turtles, like this Texas river cooter, have to crawl ashore in the late spring or early summer and bury their eggs nearby. All baby turtles hatch under the ground and must make their way to the water on their own. Even though they all start out in the same basic way, the turtles of Spring Lake vary in their physical characteristics, behaviors, diet, and population. Let's take a look at the different kinds. The most common by far is the Texas River Cooter, Pseudomys texana. They grow to be over a foot long, and older females can get even larger. They aren't picky eaters at all, consuming vegetation, carrion, and even live animals when they can catch them. They seem to be gregarious and often pack in close together at good basking sites. Let's go back to that mother river cooter laying her eggs. Females often return to the same general location season after season to dig their nests. They carry liquid inside their bodies to help soften the dirt to help them dig. They don't provide any care for their eggs besides a good buried hiding spot to start out in. But big ones like this may lay up to 18 eggs, so there's a better chance of at least one baby turtle surviving to adulthood since they can expel their digging fluid if agitated. If you spot a turtle trying to cross a road at the Meadow Center, only pick it up if absolutely necessary. Help her finish crossing with a minimal amount of handling or prodding. Don't reroute her unless she's headed into immediate danger. Remember how determined they are to find the same spot as before. If you can keep her from spraying her digging liquid all over you, it's a win-win. Next most common is the red-eared slider. Trachymes scripta elegans. They look a lot like river cooters, except they often have red patches behind their eyes. Although older sliders, and they can live for 30 or more years, often lose their markings, as you can see in this big one. I'm not entirely sure if they're native to San Marcos. Red-eared sliders were the quintessential pet turtle for many decades in the southern U.S., and often propagated by pet stores or given out as prizes for carnival games. Like all the turtles around here, they start out as tiny, cute, coin-sized babies. But this species can grow just as big as the river cooters, so they would often be released into the wild when they got too big. This probably helped their population spread beyond its original bounds in the southeastern U.S. Similar to the river cooter is the Florida red belly turtle, Pseudomys nelsoni. What's that? Why does Spring Lake in San Marcos, Texas, have a population of Florida red belly turtles? We don't know, but we do think they have a breeding population here, as hatchlings have been found on multiple occasions. They're common enough that we even have a few in our aquarium. If you want my best guess as to why they're here, I'd say that maybe it had something to do with the theme park, Ocarina Springs. The park's founders imported talent from a similar aquatic amusement park in Florida, and it's quite possible that that imported talent may have brought some Florida wildlife with them. Just a guess. 
All three species of turtle we've covered so far occupy a similar niche in the ecosystem of Spring Lake. They're the cleanup crew. They munch on plants, including algae that constantly grow in the lake. They also eat dead things. They're pretty great to have around. They even eat the algae that grows on the hulls of the glass bottom boats, helping to keep them clean. The next turtle is my favorite, the musk turtle, Stenotherus odoratus. These are the smallest turtles in the lake, and a big one would hardly reach six inches in length. They look kind of like tiny snapping turtles. Their outsized head helps them to crunch into shellfish and root around for water bugs and worms. They are mostly predatory turtles, although they can eat plants too, and they're hardly threatening to anyone. In fact, to make up for their bite-sizedness, they exclude a stinky, foul-tasting liquid from their rear ends when picked up. This is why they're also known as stink pot turtles. They often stay hidden in masses of water plants, only coming up periodically for a breath of air. But they've been known to occasionally climb high up into trees and even fall from above into the boats of unsuspecting passersby. From the littlest turtle in Spring Lake to the king of Spring Lake turtles, next is the common snapping turtle, Chelydra serpentina. This is a baby snapper in our aquarium. When fully grown, they are not exclusively predatory, but they can definitely take down the largest prey of anything in the lake, save maybe the very largest catfish. They can also live more than twice as long as a river cooter or red-eared slider. Some of the snappers in Spring Lake could very well be older than any of the glass bottom boats that have been around since the 1950s. Even though they like to bury down and hide in the mud, they're active enough around here to be seen floating about near the surface to catch some rays, or even out basking on the big log with the other turtles. When they're out of the water, their bulky legs, arms, head, and tail hang out ponderously, and they sag without the buoyancy provided by the water. They're definitely much less agile and quick on land, which is why they're really only aggressive when caught outside of the water. I've run head-on into a 20-pound snapper while snorkeling at night in the San Marcos River, and it just turned around and swam off. I'm still careful about where I stick my toes, though. But just because they're mostly harmless to us doesn't mean that they aren't an important predator of big fish and even birds at Spring Lake. You might think that the common snapping turtle is the longest species of turtle in Spring Lake and the most rarely seen. But the top prizes for both of those contests go to the Guadalupe Spiny Softshell. These turtles are so rare that we don't even have any video of them, but they're seen maybe once every few weeks or so in the summer. Their shells can grow up to nearly two feet long and almost as big across. Their shells are different from the others, leathery instead of hard and bony like other turtles. They're extremely fast in the water and can move much more quickly than a snapper on land. Their necks are so long that they can reach all the way back to their rear end, so you'd get a pretty good bite from them if you tried to pick one up from any side. Soft shells are especially well equipped to eat crawfish, mussels, clams, and fish. They spend most of their time down in the mud, which is why they aren't seen very often. But they're really amazing, almost like freshwater sea turtles. If you want to see one, there are shallow mud bottom ponds nearby Spring Lake on the main campus of Texas State University San Marcos, and they seem to be more commonly spotted around those. Although we were able to capture this photo of one big female coming out to lay her eggs near the glass bottom boat dock, actually very close to the same spot where the river cooter, shown earlier, was digging her nest. As you can see, our different kinds of turtles all have their role to play in the ecosystem and food web here at Spring Lake. They're practically all pretty invulnerable to attack from other predators when fully grown, even the musk turtle with its stinky odor. But as eggs or juveniles, they actually are an important source of food for other animals. And they, in turn, help us keep the lake clean and free of carrion and overgrown vegetation. They're also some of the most fun to watch types of wildlife regularly seen on glass bottom boat tours. Just remember to be considerate of their behaviors and please don't add more to our existing population by releasing your own. Pet turtles don't belong in our rivers and lakes. Thanks for joining me on this look at the turtles of Spring Lake. We all hope to see you back here at the Meadow Center as soon as it's safe. In the meantime, Keep an eye out on our website and our social media accounts for more videos and content like this. And if you feel like you can, please send us a donation or buy a gift certificate or annual pass. We could really use your support right now. Thank you.